the Lord. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the 14th chapter of the book of Exodus. Today we're going to talk about, or tonight, today, uh, who is fighting your battles? Now I'm going to tell you what, if you don't get a little more weight, we're going to do the hokey pokey. Amen. Amen. We'll make you put your head in and your back end in and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Who is fighting your battles? I can tell you, you know, when, when, you're, when you're facing difficult times, it's easy to want to fight in the flesh. It's easy to want to revert to the flesh. It's easy to want to do it yourself. Easy to want to figure it out how you can get it done. But thank God there is a God in heaven. Amen? And he is the faithful God. Praise God. Uh, let's start out here in, in Exodus chapter 14. And um, we'll back up here to verse 10. You know the story. Israel had been uh, let go. And, uh, you know, Pharaoh had let them go. He said, go, go worship your God. And they went and borrowed stuff. And, yeah, they borrowed diamonds and rubies and gold and emeralds and, I mean, silver. And they were loaded up to bear for 400 years of captivity and the Egyptians were so glad they were leaving town they gave me everything. They just knocked on the door and said I want you to go. They said here leave. Just get out of Dodge. Get out of here. Man we're tired of the plagues. We're tired of you know firstborn dying. We're tired of locusts slowing up. We're tired of drinking blood. We're tired of frogs. We're tired of pestilence. Man just get out of Dodge. And the Jews went thank you and walked off with it. And they headed out and, uh, you know, and, and, and people say, well, God, you know, uh, kind of that, that scene from the Ten Commandments. They get to, they get to the Red Sea, and uh, Pharaoh goes, their God's not a good general. <laughs> he didn't live in a way of escape. And I'm going to tell you something. God will lead you to places where there is no other way out except for him to split an ocean. Thank you for that one. That's right. Now, listen. I don't know what's going on, but I curse the, first, the church of the frozen chosen. All right? I command you to wake up and say something. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. I want you to, to connect right now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. And we thank you for people's hearts being connected to the Spirit of God so that we can impart that which is necessary for victory in their life. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and so Israel had been, uh, Pharaoh said, get out of here. And then verse 10, it says, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, I mean, we'll back up a little bit. Uh, verse 5, And it was told the king of Egypt, the people fled. The heart of the Pharaoh and his servants were turned against the people. And they said, we, Why have we done this? Why have uh, we have let Israel go from serving us? Man, one minute they can't wait to get rid of them. The next minute, they go, man, what, what in the world have we done? We don't have any slaves anymore. Who's going to make our brick? Who's going to build our big uh, pyramids to honor the Pharaoh? Now, do anybody know what the, uh, the uh, mindset of the Pharaoh was or, or the people to, about the Pharaoh was? The mindset of the Pharaohs was they were eternal beings. The people, now not the Pharaohs themselves, they knew they weren't, but the people believed the Pharaoh was an eternal being. They just lived ever, forever, and ever, and ever, and kept living. And that's why when God sent Moses to, uh, to Pharaoh, he said, you tell him, I am that I am sent you. Now, the literal Hebrew says, I exist because I exist. You, you presented yourself as the one who is perpetually existent, the one who really exists, only because he, he just exists because he exists. There's no other explanation. I am that I am. I exist because I exist has sent you. In other words, dude, you come up against the real you come up against the one who does exist eternally. Hallelujah. Amen. Who has neither beginning of days nor end of life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. From everlasting to everlasting, glory to God. Hallelujah. So when Moses showed him and said, I am that I am, sent me that, that was a wake-up call. Hey, there's one out there bigger than me. Are you here? And now, but anyway, so they go through the whole plague thing, and then finally they go, okay, get, get out of here. And then after they got out of there, they went, why have we done this? In verse 6, and he made ready his chariot and took his people with him, and he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Now let me say this. Notice he didn't harden it until he made a decision not to let him go. I'm going to tell you, sometimes we just, I don't think God just hardens people's hearts just to harden the heart. I think what we see here is Pharaoh chose not to let the people go because he was going to go after them. And God hardened his heart. He said, okay, if you're, going to do, if you're going to play this game, I'm going to clean your clock. I'm taking you out. You're not going to mess with my people. Amen. Amen. 
Now, I'm going to tell you something. God loves everybody, but he loves his people. The ones who have a covenant with him get preferential treatment. Amen. I don't believe that. Ask Paul. At the time, Saul, because on the road to Damascus to carry out threatenings, he ran into the head of the church who asked him this question, why persecutest thou me? The church. Knocked him off his horse, and I'm going to tell you something. Jesus came with the Mr. T anointing that day. <laughs> Hello? Fool, get saved, or you're going to hell now. That was it. Paul had a choice. Get saved or go to hell. He was getting ready to get taken out. And the first words out of my, his mouth were, Who art thou? Lord? <laughs> Didn't take him long to convert. Hello? Hello? God does prefer his people. God has a covenant with his people. And he will not let his people suffer persecution and suffer uh, calamity. Uh, to a certain point, he said, That's it. I'm, com I'm coming in. When the enemy comes in like a flood, well, who's the enemy? Satan and anyone who's hooked up with him. That's why you don't want to be hooked up with the devil. You run with the devil, you're going to run into the standard. Yeah. Stand up. Stand up. Y'all acting kind of sleepy out there. Now put your left foot in, you put your left foot out, you put your left foot in, and you shake it up. Come on, shake it, come on, shake it all about. <laughs> now that's as close, now I don't have to get any further. Sit back down. We got close. All right. So it gets down here and it goes, and, so, and, and um, the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out on high hand, without, I mean, went out with a high hand, and the Egyptians uh, pursued after them. And all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army overtook them and camped by the sea beside Piharoth and Balaam Zippoth. Well, yeah, that's about speaking in tongues. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Now think about it. They've already seen all the plagues. They've seen God do all these supernatural, marvelous things. Isn't it amazing how quickly we can forget that God is the one who will deliver us? Yeah. Yeah. Last week you got a blessing. You had $10,000 too much. This week you get a $20,000 bill. Oh, God, what am I going to do? Forget not, hallelujah. Yeah. Forget not that God is your refuge. God is your fortress. A very present help in trouble, glory to God. I'm telling you, that's why it's good to sing songs that are full of faith in the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 You don't need to sing some through the mud, some through the floods. Everybody goes through the blood. Oh, help me, Jesus. How about I am healed, I am whole. From the top of my head to the soul to the tip of my toes. It's good to know that uh, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. It's good to sing stuff that will build you up in faith. So when the Egyptians show up, the first thing out of your mouth is not, Help me, Lord! Help me, help me, Jesus! Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? <coughs> Y'all want to stand back up? We got the right foot to do. All right. No, it's not about forgetting. You are, we are to, you know, the, the, the psalmist said, David said in the 103rd Psalm, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. A lot of the Psalms were reminders of what God had done for them. Yeah. Amen. Uh, the Raymond Singers of Band used to do a song. Annie, Annie would always lead it. Uh, he'll do it again. You know, he'll do it again. Yes. Well, God will do it again. And he'll do it again. And he'll do it again. Because as often as the enemy comes, God will keep rising up and doing it again. Amen. Amen. He'll show himself strong to the righteous, praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, church. It's, you know, you got to get your shout back. You got to get your victory voice back, praise God. Oh, we've been going through a hard time. We've been going through a difficult time. And yeah, and it's time that you stop fighting the battle and look to the greater one, hallelujah, who already has the answer, who's already won the victory. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah, and get a shout back. Amen. Some of you can't even shout anymore. Hallelujah. 
Thank the Lord. Oh, it's going to be another one of them services. Look, you need to cast that ER devil out. Are you here? And get a David spirit, praise God. Hallelujah. Where when you begin to think of the Lord, you got to throw down your harp, you got to throw down your coverings, and you got to run through the town and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because God is so good. Hallelujah. God is your deliverance. God is your answer. God is your all in all. I'm preaching better than you. Say amen. Amen. We've been in a difficult time. Uh, my hope's been lost. Listen, don't you worry about $5 gallon gasoline. Don't you worry about the economy. You, are, you serve the living God. Hallelujah. But I can't pay my bills. You don't know what I'm talking about, Pastor. Oh, dear Lord, don't even come talk to me about that. If I told you, you wouldn't believe it. I'm just telling you, but God's still my answer, and God is still my source, and God is still the one who brings us out, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. I tell you, something happened the other day. I had to get in the car and just drive off, come to the church and sit here, and just kind of get myself together. Glory to God. I'm telling you, God is bigger. God is the answer. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. And they began to cry out. Ah, and they said to Moses, oh, Moses, because there weren't enough graves in Egypt, you took us out here to die in the wilderness. Did God say he was going to bring them into the wilderness to kill them? No. no. He said, I'll bring you into a land that floweth with milk and honey. Glory to God. Yes. You better start looking at the promise of God and get your eyes off the circumstance. Yes. The circumstance will destroy you. The circumstance will take you down. But I want you to know we serve a God who's already got an answer before you ever showed up to talk to you about it. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Before it ever occurred, he already had the answer. Yes. Paul writes and says, he knows what we have need of before we ask or even think it. Now, that's pretty awesome. I said, that's pretty awesome. Before the problem showed up that you're looking at right now, God already had the answer waiting. Hallelujah. Woo! You don't think he cares? I can't figure it out. I can't understand it. I don't know. This is, children of Israel, oh, well, he brought us out here to kill us in the wilderness. If he wanted to kill them, he just left them where they were. God didn't bring them out to kill them. God didn't deliver you to make you go under. He didn't bring you this far. He didn't bring you out this far and bring you out on the land to walk by faith just so he could chop it off and let you be like the coyote. Are you here? Y'all do watch Roadrunner and the Coyote, don't you? Yeah. Me, me. That's right. Me, me. You know, you'd be a Roadrunner and just at the devil. We need to start having testimony services again where people stand up and say, my God is my source. My God is my answer. And it doesn't matter what comes my way. My God has already made a way where there was no way. He brings me out with a strong arm. He establishes my comings and my goings. Glory to God. I track in the hind feet of a deer. He takes me up in the high places. Glory to God. Instead of, Lord, the devil been after me all week. I just don't know what I'm going to do. Bless his holy name. Yeah. It's time we get the testimony of faith instead of the complaint of defeat. Somebody say amen. amen. And when Pharaoh drew nigh unto the children of Israel, they lifted their eyes, they cried out. And <coughs> verse 11, because there was no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us so to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is it not this word that we did tell you in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? Now, they were saying that until they, until they got free. They're not a one of them when they, got the, when they went out and started getting all the gold and the jewelry and the clothes and all the stuff from the Egyptians said, man, we need to stay here. That's called flaky Christian. That's called granola Christian. Y'all know what granola Christians are, don't you? Fruits, nuts, and flakes all packaged together in the same box. All right? 
you're, you're flaky. You're squirrely. One minute, whoa, look at all the gold and the jewelry and all the diamonds I got. Hallelujah. Oh, we're going to die. Why did you bring us out here to die? It's time you stop looking and complaining and worrying and always thinking about why, why aren't you going to make it? God did not bring you to the edge of the Red Sea with the Egyptian army behind you to cause you to die, to cause you to be smitten. He brought you to the place where faith will deliver you and faith will take you over and faith will sustain you and faith will cause your enemies. Hallelujah. Like Mary and sing, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider are thrown into the sea. Glory to God. My father is God and I will praise him. Amen. How many remember, how many remember that song? I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider are thrown into the sea. Now, let me tell you something. That's the same sea they were walking on just a few minutes before the Egyptians drowned. They were walking on the same soil. They were walking with the, the walls of the waters congealed and stood right up beside them. But right before that happened, they're whining and moaning and complaining. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we die in the wilderness. Now, that ain't what they believed. That's not what they believed. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and ye shall see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, ye shall see them again no more forever. That's it. Take a good look. Take a good look at their face. <laughs> their smile looks out of place. It sure did because that smile they had <laughs> was getting ready to get erased. <clears throat> Thank you, Nathan. I can't do it. You, you, you've proven I can't. All right. Listen to what Moses said. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Now, wait a second now. Has he even talked to the Lord about this? No, because the next verse says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Why are you crying unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Moses went and talked to the Lord after he told him what the Lord was going to do. That was a faith statement. Moses had gotten over in the faith. He knew that if God had brought them there, God had brought them out. He knew God had said he would deliver his people. He knew God. See, when you know the character of God, you always know what the end result's going to be. The Bible says that when Jesus was on the cross, it says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the shame of the cross. Why? Because he knew what was on the other side. He knew that when he died, when he became sin for us who knew no sin, when he was descended into the region of the dam and God, God punished him for our sin, that he was speaking there and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He said, this day have I begotten thee and raised him up from the dead. He knew after all was said and done, he would sit down at the right hand of the Father, glory to God, being made the head of the church, glory to God, leading captivity captive, glory to God. Hallelujah. He saw the joy on the other side. You got to keep your eye focused. You got to keep your eye fixed. You got to keep your heart set on the other side and not on what you're going through. Amen. Like one preacher said, when you're going through hell, don't stop. Amen. Amen. Some Christians get out and have a picnic lunch and put up the tent. Yeah. Said, Lord, what are we going to do? Lord, we're in trouble. Lord, what's going to happen to us? Stop stopping and keep going. Amen. Stop stopping. There you go. <laughs> Quit stopping. <laughs> You Southerners, we always put stuff together. This ain't supposed to go together. Ain't one of them. It's now in the diction. They're showing enough. That's right. Stop. Quit. Cease stopping. <laughs> quit having your picnic party of pity. And, and, and why? And how come? And what's going to happen, Lord? Keep your eye fixed on the goal. Keep your eye fixed on what Jesus has for you. Keep your eye on what God has called you into, glory to God. And see on the other side your victory. See on the other side your deliverance. See on the other side your fulfillment of the promise that God made to you, glory to God. Yeah.
Amen. Get your eye back on the prize and get it off of the circumstance. Hallelujah. Paul wrote to the church at Corinth and said this. He said, while we look not at the things which are seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. That word temporal in the Greek means subject to change. But the things which are not seen are eternal. What's eternal? Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. What's, what's temporal? What's sub the circumstances. That circumstance you face is subject to change. Why? Because unless it's the word, it, can, it, it has to change. Everything has to line up with what God's word says when you lay hold of the word by faith. When you say what the word says, glory to God. Hallelujah. Moses says, stand, you still see the salvation of the Lord. You'll not see these guys anymore. The Lord, listen, the, verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord, and Lord, Moses, the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Speak to the children, they go forward. Lift up thy rod and stretch it a hand out over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel, and he, had, he didn't have this information before he told them, stand still and see the salvation of God. He just took a, faith, a step of faith. I'm going to tell you something. You're just going to have to start saying what God, start saying the faith answer before you find out how God's going to do it. It takes no faith to do it if you already know everything. You got to start seeing the answers before, and, for, and let God work out the hows. We're too busy trying to get all the hows before we do anything. Hello? I don't, I don't know how the Lord's going to do this. That's not your business. That's his. How is his? Believing is yours. Thank you for your enthusiasm. But lift up thy rod, stretch out thy hand over the sea, divide it. The children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. I'll harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they, shall follow, they, and they shall follow them. And I will give me honor upon Pharaoh and upon his host and his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I've got mine honor upon Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the angel of the Lord, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. Now, see, that, that cloud went behind them and stood between them and the Egyptians. Now, I'm going to tell you what. The Egyptians were a superstitious bunch. They had to be thinking, what in the world have we gotten ourselves into? Now, we're going to follow Pharaoh because we had to follow him until we get killed. But I'm telling you what, we're messing with something. I don't know what I'm messing with. Hello? And it, uh, it came between the Egyptians and the children of Israel. It was a cloud of darkness to them, but it gave light by night to, to these, to the Israelis, so that, they one, that one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went to the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall on them to, on their left hand and on their right hand. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, chariots, horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked upon the, uh, to the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire, and at the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and they took off their chariot wheels and drave them heavily. So the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth. See, they finally figured it out once they were in too, in too deep. He knocked the wheels off their chariots and they, they said, that's it. That's it. We're out here in the middle of this mess. Our wheels will come off. He drove, the, drove the, the right into the ground. And where are they going? They're going to cut beef a boogie and split. They're going, they're going back to Egypt. Are you here? And Moses stretched forth his hand upon the sea, and the sea returned to its strength. And when he, and, and, and the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots, and the horsemen, and all the hosts of the Pharaoh then came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon the dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were walled unto them to the right and on the left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day at the, at the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw a great work which the Lord did to the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and the, his servant Moses. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel a song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider are thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He is my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him in habitation. My Father is God, and I will exalt him. He goes on now. Here we go. Now, here, here's the problem with Israel. They always wanted to see something before they get happy. 
They walked by sight and not by faith. Yes. Come on now. They didn't have a song of victory until they saw the dead Egyptians. The believer walks by faith and not by sight. We had the song of victory before we see anything dead. Amen. While, while the enemy's still in our face saying, I'm going to take you out. You're going under. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make you the tail and not the head. I'm going to put you under and not above. Hallelujah. To the devil. <laughs> That's what he's saying. He's singing songs to you. Anybody have the devil talk to you in your, in your, in your head? Anybody ever lay down at night? Here come the devil. Said, I'm taking you out. You're going down, dude. I've got you this time. I'm going to take you out and there's nothing you can do about it. Anybody ever been there? Ever had the devil just come, I mean, just come all over the place and everything around you felt like that you were in some, some chainsaw massacre movie. The devil was everywhere, but putting all kinds of pressure on you and, and your mind's, your mind's going squirrely. They're going to take this, they're going to take that, and you're going, they're going to die early. I mean, everything you can think of is going on. Let me tell you something. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. And that is why there is one on the inside called the greater one. Hallelujah. That greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's why the word of God says to bring into captivity every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Are you here? Hallelujah. And bring it into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Glory to God. That's why when those thoughts come, you say, no, -uh, Mr. Devil, I want you to know that I'm blood washed, blood bought child of God. Hallelujah. I am in blood covenant with the God who created the universe. Hallelujah. I'm in blood covenant with the one called Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus the Messiah. Praise God. The one who was and is and is to come. Glory to God. I'm in covenant with the one who stripped you of your, your authority and took the crown of righteousness and, and, and the crown of man's glory off of you and brought it back and put it on the church. Glory to God. I'm in covenant with the one who raised me up with him and made me sit with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. I've been born again. The life of God's in the inside of me and I got the name of Jesus glory to God and in his name I command you pack up your saddle and ship it home baby because I'm the head and not the tail I'm above only and not beneath I go over and I don't go under I'm a winner I'm a I'm victorious glory to God through him that loved me glory to God yeah. Yeah. amen yeah. you better stop running from the devil and running after him Hallelujah. You better stop listening to him and tell him to listen to you. I've listened to you long enough, chump. Here's how the deal works. I love that story, Brother Summerall. Brother Summerall was in his bed, and the devil came in. He woke up in the middle of the night. Now, you got to understand, Brother Summerall had dealt with some serious demons. If you'll study his life, uh, the, the story of the, the girl bitten by demons in Manila, Philippines. You read that book, Bitten by Devils, by Brother Summerall. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. You forget horror movies. This girl was being bitten by devils. Now, this is not just makeup stuff. He became a national hero in the Philippines. The, the um, government officials in this asylum would play this girl screaming over the national radio. And then you come and say, is there anybody can help this girl? The demons were raping her. She would disappear. They would bite her. She would pull out hair out of, out of nothing. And, 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 they, and they had no, they couldn't find it. It didn't belong to anything they knew of. Still in vaults in, in the Philippines today. And he went, and he went in. And, and as soon as he got there, he looked at that girl. And he said, I can help her. And he went in and looked at that girl. And, and he said, no, I can't help her. He, and he went back. And then he went to a time of fasting and prayer. And the Lord began to teach him how to, how to exercise authority over demons. And he went back and cast that devil out and set that girl free. And the church in Manila, Philippines is still there today since 1940, 1950, whenever that, when this happened. And um, it's still a national, it's a big church there in Manila, Philippines. And, uh, but the, he's a national hero there. And of course, Brother Summerall is going to be with the Lord now, but I'm telling you, for his whole life, he was, he was, like, a, he was like, you know, that's, that's Lester Summerall. He had dealt with demons. God, God showed him some stuff about dealing with demonic forces. So he's in bed one night and wakes up, his bed's jumping and shaking and all this kind of stuff, and it slides across the room. He, and, you know, how, I know what most of y'all would do. God, Lord, help me. Pastor, bring the oil. Oh, dear Jesus, there's the devil in my house. Come on now. Get out of this house. That, that house is demon-possessed. You know what he did? 
He said, I command you to stop it, put it down, and leave in Jesus' name. And the man went, blop. And he stopped, he thought for a second, wait, come back here. Put it back where you found it. And the bed slid back across where it was. He says, now get out of here in Jesus' name. See, when you know your authority, devils don't bother you. When you know who you are in Christ, the devils don't bother you. It's when you, you, you bought into the Lord brought us out here to die, and we were better off where we were before. How many were better off before you knew Jesus? Drug addicts, prostitution, I mean poverty, I mean every kind of calamity going on. Your house was a mess. Now you get over and start serving the Lord, the devil comes to you. It's better, it better when you were drunk and high. No, it won't. Dear Lord. It's better when you run around with women and getting drunk. No, it won't. The reason you run around with women and getting drunk is because you won't happy. You thought that was going to make you happy. It won't make you happy. The devil will tell you all kinds of stuff. You had it better when you were driving your, driving your uh, gangster sheen. <laughs> I mean, remember, remember that brand song? Moving on the scene in your gangster scene, gangster scene, <laughs> diamond in the back, TV antenna, gangster white wall. You, you, you remember that song, don't you, Jerry? Yeah. <laughs> That's my era. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. You, you better off when you were pimping. You better off when you were turning tricks. You better off when you were, when you, when you were robbing at work and stealing and embezzling. Then before you knew the Lord. Now you know the Lord, you don't have anything. That's a lie. I said, That's a lie. The devil is just trying to get you to believe that you could do it in the flesh, what you, you, you've been getting from the Spirit. God is your source. God will bring you out. And yeah, it's, maybe it's been, a, it's been a tough economic time. I mean, for everybody. Listen, the whole world's been a tough economic time, not just the United States. I mean, Greece and Spain are in so much trouble right now, they're about to completely dissolve. I mean, financially. They are in financial meltdowns. Are you here? The only reason the Chinese aren't melting down is they only pay $2, $2 a week. Hello? And they tell them how many children they can have, what they can do, and when they can breathe, and when they can't do this. And they're going, they're having abortions, and everybody wants a boy. I tell you, it ain't going to be long. They ain't going to have no, they ain't going to have no China. What do you mean? Everybody goes in and has an abortion until they get a boy. And tell you, you got to have a woman if you're going to have more babies. It just works that way. The whole world's been in economic chaos. You say, well, Pastor, I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. Get your eyes, I'm going to tell you, we're coming up on an election, and people think this candidate or that candidate's going to fix everything. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. You better get your eyes on something other than a man. Yes. You better get your eyes on Jesus. And it doesn't matter if Republican, Independent, Green Party, Libertarian, uh, Democrat wins the, the election or wins the White House or wins the Senate or wins the Congress. Yeah, I mean, you better not stop and go, whoo, we got it debate now. If whoever you think should win, win is going to help you out. You better get your eyes back on Jesus. And you better trust the Lord because the Lord is your answer. Because whoever else comes in, or if we get a different president, or we keep the same president, we keep a different Congress or a new Congress, I am telling you, they're facing problems. It's going to take something bigger than that man to fix. It's going to take a move of God. And the church had better get our eyes back on Jesus. And we better be able to learn how to reap, to sow, and to reap in famine no matter what's going on around us. Amen. And walk by faith and not by sight. We know a pastor, um, and well, Ed Elliott knew this pastor. He was, you know, he was over there for a number of years in uh, South Africa. And he had a, a village. And this village got saved, born again, turned on to the Lord. And they were in great, great drought. This was about 20 years ago in that part of Africa. Except this village planted crops. And every afternoon, a cloud would come over and rain on their crops. Nowhere else. Nowhere else just come and rain on their crops. Next day, rain would come up, rain on their crops, nowhere else. They harvested bountiful harvest, and all the other villages started coming to them for food, and they started getting them saved. They learned to trust God. You could reap in famine. You can sow and reap in famine if you learn to trust God. Amen. You can prosper in the midst of absolute abject poverty. You can prosper. And have more than enough. Because God is God. Yeah, I know there's, there's some things you, you know, that, that we call wisdom we do. But I'm telling you what, don't let wisdom replace faith. Don't let what you call wisdom replace your faith that God is your answer. That God is your source. That God brings you out. Can you say amen? I can't see the clock back there, so hallelujah. <clears throat> I hadn't even got to my first verses. <laughs> Praise God, other than the opening verse. Well, everybody say Shanda. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And so, 
They began to sing that song. I was singing to it. But see, here's the thing. You got to start singing songs before you see dead Egyptians. Now, I know, I say this all the time. I know David Engel's music is not exactly the style of music for 90% of you in here. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a country, I don't even, what would you call it, Nathan? David Engel stuff. Country folk, folky, or, it's different. It's, up there. oh, Lord. It's a plethora of genres. That's his artsy side. He took, a, he took a, uh, his, his English teacher wanted him to go, get, go to a tutoring because uh, she's wanting certain kind of papers and he carries in his paper to, to the tutor and she goes, oh, you're a songwriter, right? <laughs> I can see the artsy. He writes artsy. You got to clean up the artsy and make it structured like they like it. He, he's so artsy. He, he, a plethora of genres. That means there's a bunch of different ones for us other, for other folk, all right? But you know, I, I know for a good number of you, you, you may not care for uh, the style, but I love the lyric. I love the content. Amen? Lift up your eyes and look from the place where you now stand. North, south, east, and west, I'll give you all the land to thy seed forever. God promised Abraham, I will make thy faith seed number as the sand. Do, 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 do. And I am of the seed of Abraham, and this blessing will rest on me. I am of the seed of Abraham. I'm not moved by what I see. Jesus was made a surety, and that's what I believe. He's the seed of Abraham, and the seed remains in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can't get there. Think about it. Now, what did I just sing? I just sang our covenant. Yeah. Now, it may not be your cool style. I mean, it may not be hip-hop Christian, or it may not be ballad Christian. It might not be hard, screamo Christian. I, if you've got to sing something, you can't understand what you're saying. Just don't even bother. I want to feed my faith, <laughs> not destroy my vocal cords. Amen? But how, you, when you start singing, lift up your eyes and look from the place where you now stand. North, south, east, and west. I, what's that? God said, every place in which your foot shall tread, I've given it to you. Amen. Then he says, if you be Christ, Galatians, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise thereof. See, when you sing songs or you, or you put into yourself things full of faith, when the devil comes, you got something coming back out. Says, no. If you be Christ, you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I'm an heir according to the promise of God. Abraham's seed. I'm Abraham's seed. You know what the blessing of Abraham was? The blessing of increase and multiplication. Amen. God said, I will bless you and bless you and increase you and increase you. The Weymouth translation. I will bless you and bless you and increase you and increase you. That's blessing and increase. Blessing and increase. Blessing and increase. Blessing and increase. Well, Pastor, I ain't been seeing it. Start saying it. Amen. If you don't say it, you won't see it. Amen. And if you're waiting to see dead poverty bodies floating around in the water, you're not going to see it. If you're waiting to see uh, dead debt floating around the water, you're not going to see it. You got to say it before you'll see it. Amen. I said amen. amen. Glory to God. Where are we? Oh, my, my, my. Everybody say Shanda. Yeah, what does that mean? Nobody knows. Well, finally we get to heaven. Everybody's ever, every Christian I've ever known is spirit-filled, thinks they know what Shanda means. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord showed me what Shandai means. Well, I, got, I can get you 15 people that got a different revelation. Maybe that's what it means to you. Hallelujah, glory to God. Don't go out and write a book on it. I got the revelation of Shandai. Because there'll be people who buy it. Then they won't buy anything else you ever write again. Amen. Uh, uh, who will give me five more minutes? 
5, 10, 15, 20, 25. All right, that's 25 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> it's cumulative. <laughs> it's not concurrent. It's cumulative. <laughs> Too late. I got the 25. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 says, Well, though we walk in the flesh... We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Glory to God. Your flesh isn't going to win the answer. Your flesh is not going to get it done for you. The things you face, your flesh can't figure it out. Oh, but there is a God in heaven. Hallelujah. I tell you, it's just it's good to know that God is God. You remember that song that um, uh, when Nancy Harmon wrote it with Raymond Singers, a band did a lot of it, called God Rides on the Water? God Rides on the Flood? Amen. I'm telling you, when, when Satan's coming in in flood, in flood terms, God's just riding on the water. He's riding on the flood. He's bring, when the flood comes in, here comes your deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you, we do not war after the flesh. Though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. That the greater one on the inside of us, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world, calls us to, call, rises up in us. He rises up in us right now. Hallelujah. He's rising up in every believer in this room right this second. Glory to God. There's a greater one. Hallelujah. Praise God. I tell you, I like what, I like what the Bible says. <coughs> greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. God, the Holy Ghost is greater. I said the Holy Ghost is is greater. The Holy Ghost is greater. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you might think the devil is big and bad and ugly. He might be all of those things, but he's not bigger than God. And he's not tougher than God. And he's not greater than God. Hallelujah. He's been defeated by the head of the church. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. And the Bible says this, that if we will submit ourselves therefore to God and resist the devil, he will flee from you. Now, the, the Greek has a kind of a funny play on that word. That, you know, you understand that we do a word-for-word -word translation, but sometimes a Greek word will mean or carry more meaning with it than we can translate with a one-to-one with a, with a one word translation. Literally, the Greek says this, submit yourself to God, submit, uh, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he, the devil, will flee from you as in terror. You think you're scared of him? He's more scared of you finding out that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and have the authority to use the name of Jesus. I'm telling you. you know, have you ever seen Lord of the Rings? You know, when the big eyes going around, they all duck so they don't get seen by the eye. I'm telling you, when you say in the name of Jesus, demons duck. They all plop. I mean, you know, they whip them like a, they whip with like a whip dog. Hello. Have you ever had a dog bark? I, my father-in-law, he had this dog named Charlie. Charlie was a great, was a German shepherd boxer cross. So he's big like a shepherd as far as height and stature, but he was his shape and muscu muscular build and, and color and everything was a boxer. Now that's a big dog. Charlie was dumb. Charlie come running at you going, <laughs> the tongue hanging about this far. But Charlie, I mean, he, 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 he did some stuff to Mr. Glitz one day, and he was, old, he was old school. He took electric wire. He was an electrician. He beat that dog with electric wire. That dog was barking and going all crazy at him, and he beat his rubber with that electric wire. Until the devil will come barking at you about how big it is. Then the Bible says he, as a roaring lion he comes. Didn't say he was a roaring lion. Read the Bible. Who's the lion? Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, he ain't smoking dope either. Anyway, sorry, I just had to throw the roster thing out there. Amen. Jesus is the lion. Satan comes as a roaring lion. He wants to scare you. He wants to run you. But you just run to the roar. Amen. You trust the head of the church. The, the, the Lord. We're going to have to pick up with this. We'll pick up tonight. We're going to talk about tonight who, uh, uh, um, how to fight the good fight of faith. Then we're going to get into God gives us a victory. Then we're talking about the Lord fights our battles. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to get into some different things. We'll get into David and Goliath. Hallelujah. And, and you know this, but I'm just going to throw it out there for those who may not. Why did David have five stones? And let me tell you, it wasn't because he was afraid he was going to miss four times. Hello? It wasn't a backup plan. It wasn't plan B, C, D, and E. Hello? Y'all know why? Y'all know why, don't you? Goliath had four brothers. Study the Bible. David killed all four of the giants before he died. Goliath had four brothers. He went out there getting ready to take them all out. And there's another story there. Don't rejoice over your victory while the others are still living. 
go ahead and take them all out. Amen. All right, let's stand up. Father, we thank you for our time together. We thank you that we've been encouraged to look to you and to trust you and to get our eyes back on you and get them off the circumstances, but get them on the answer, praise God. We thank you that because greater, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world, we win. We're, we, we're the winner. Say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Jesus, Jesus always causes me to triumph, to triumph, triumph. I'm victorious. I am victorious in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Father, bless them in the name of Jesus. Anybody here today, you need to get right with the Lord. You're not serving the Lord. You need to get right. You're backslidden, not serving God. You know it. Anybody here? Anybody here not saved? Don't know Jesus as your Lord? Anybody here not filled with the Holy Ghost? You know what we mean, Acts 2, 4, and they were all filled with the Spirit and began speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Anybody here not filled with the Holy Ghost? All right. Anybody got any need of any kind you want to pray for before we leave? We believe, we believe in the power of prayer. We believe that the Word works. Amen.